Hey guys, welcome back to another Tactical Tuesday. Um, today's gonna be interesting. We're actually gonna take you into a live training class I just did on the topic of cutting commissions. Now I gotta tell you, it drives me crazy um, that so many agents are just willing to cut their commission rather than demonstrate value. Um, on that top of what drives me crazy, if you like this message today, check out my videos on what drives Craig crazy. If you like that topic, uh, go ahead and like us, subscribe. We'll get into some engagement. Commission objections. Since we're gonna have more of a listing focus now, the assumption is that you're salespeople, okay? And you're salespeople who are bent on finding listings, right? A listing is not a listing. A listing is a listing is a listing, no. There's something going on that salespeople are not in this industry anymore. We have hired so many brand new people that are not getting sales training. They're running around lowering standards for all of us. And it sucks. The panelists that were on stage, they were asked directly, were they lying? I don't know. How many of you cut your commission? What do you think the people that were doing 100 transactions a year said? No, they don't cut their commission. So how can somebody doing 100 deals a year not cut their commission, but somebody doing four cuts their commission all the time? Because they're salespeople and they believe in the value that they bring, right? Now, there's a challenge because we have a lot of unprofessionalism, in my opinion, in the local markets that we're dealing with who are effectively lowering standards, which makes it even harder for people with standards to hold them, right? So I wanna show you, Chris did this analysis for me because one of our agents is taking a listing and the seller was demanding a 5% commission. And rather than sell against that, we took it. And then my daughter, Sam, when she puts the listings in, knows to flag me and the manager saying, I need your approval if we're gonna let this happen. And for the longest time, I say no, talk to the agent, tell them with the broker's authority, go back and say no with words. And oftentimes it works, but it's happening more and more. And I'm looking at the market. So here's what's going on. This is in South Shore Falls, which goes online is literally a mile down the road from there. It's a 55 and older active community, probably 300 units in the farm. And it's a Dell Webb property. Um, the active inventory is primarily 3% offering. Everything that has sold or gone under contract is split 50, 50, 3% to two and a half. So our argument is, hey, seller, we want you to pay three, we charge 3%. Can you all say that with me? We charge 3% with the downswing. That's not a hard thing to overcome. Now we co-broke at prevailing rate in the market is the second part of that script. We co-broke at prevailing rate in the market. What is prevailing rate? You look in the neighborhood, and see how many people are offering 3%, how many are offering 4%, how many are offering 2%, because we want to put our product, our seller's product, on the shelf and make it as attractive as everything else when the consumer is picking which can of beans they want to buy. We're going to do a can of beans analogy with most pricing houses, right? So we want our competitive property, product, to be positioned well against the competition. This is a very simple concept if you relate real estate marketing to merchandise, right? When you're in the grocery store, the shitty brands are at the bottom and the good brands are at eye level. They pay for that position. The ones at eye level cost more because they paid for that position. It's probably the same friggin' beans and the cans down here, but it's got the Del Monte label and it's organic and it's non-GMO, or at least it's marketed that way. And you'll pay 89 cents for that can of beans, but this one down here is 69 cents and we'll all pay more for the Del Monte brand because the label's nice, and if it's got a torn label, forget it. So equate a torn label to a bad roof, to a faulty plumbing system, to all that. Those are torn labels, and they're worth less. They're not worthless, they're worth less, right? So I want you to focus on the mark merchandising of what we're doing, because you should not be, you should be able to overcome these objections. And then default to, it's a $300,000 house in this case. Somebody do the math for me. What's a half a percent of $300,000? $1,500. Right? Could you make an argument that a house that was marketed with a higher selling commission would sell faster? No doubt. Yeah. Well, I'm just talking, we, we charge 3%, period. We want you to co broker the prevailing rate. Let's look at the prevailing rate. Is. There's 10 active listings in South Shore Falls. Nine are offering 3%. One is offering two and a half. So you're going to come in at two and a half, and there's nine other houses for sale offering three. 
How does that make you look, Mr. Seller? Not good. And for 1500 bucks, you're going to take that chance? This is also, by the way, um, kind of what the lawsuit's about between the lawyers' class action suit against NAR, saying that the MLS colludes to make sellers pay more. But it's not. It's marketing. In a situation where there's 10 houses for sale and nine are offering three and you want to offer two, you are less attractive. And if you have motivation, that's not a good idea. And if you don't have motivation, what should the professional salesperson do? Turn down the listing. You only want motivated sellers. There are six, this is where it gets ugly. There's six pending listings for sale. Two were offering 3%, four were offering two and a half. It's not, we have to show the house, the buyer sees, it. your buyer sees the house, or the cooperating broker buyer sees the house. If they say, Julie, I wanna see this one, you're gonna say, shit. I hope you didn't see it, but you saw it, so now I gotta show it to you. And then you're gonna get two and a half instead of three, which is $1,500 less, right? There's 31 sold listings. So look at this, so you can't, you can make an argument here that the 3% doesn't cause them to sell faster because more are offering three, right? So a salesperson would say, well, if you want two and a half, then we need to price it lower, right? So it sells faster, right? Because we can attract the buyer's agents to show your house with a higher commission or a lower price. So let's lower the price 2,500 and we'll put you on the market for two and a half percent. That's a dumb mathematical equation because you're gonna pay $1,500 more to get the 3%, lower your price 2,500. Can you see how you can bullshit Apple's brains? This is what salespeople do when they're talking about commissions. Of the 31 sold listings, 16 were offering 3%, 15 offering 2.5%, and of the 31 sold, 20 are bills. Five canceled listings, three were offering 3% and two were offering, this list totally goes against everything I said is true, right? And that's because laziness is out there. It all comes down to pricing. So my point is, if you're gonna be lower commission, you better be lower price. So that's your argument. And then you back into that with a trade-off. Well, why would you lower your price $3,000 when you could raise your commission 1,500 and get more attention? But your individual situations are going to vary, right? And another thing a salesperson would do is keep looking for data that supports your cost, right? This might not, I might not only use South Shore Falls. If I want to use 33572, if, if South Shore Falls didn't give me the data set I want, I might expand to West of 41. I might expand to all of 33572 or all 55 plus or something, but I'm gonna massage. And that's why it takes time to prepare your strategic pricing analysis. You gotta understand what your market's doing. 